Uh, lastly, uh, economic difficulties in Japan are undermining some of the practices that uh, were developed in industry, uh, the practices that affirm the extent to which an industrial corporation functions as a household with permanent membership. Uh, so uh, one outcome being uh, Japanese uh, specific means for reducing employment. The Japanese will never have layoffs. The Japanese will, will never have downsizing in an American sense. Rather, what the, the Japanese do in order to reduce um, levels of employment inside of a corporation fall into, in, in generally into two categories. One is early retirement. You convince people to retire, offering them retirement packages and the like. And so they, as, as, as by becoming retirees, they are still, in a way, members of the, of the corporate household, and they've just moved a little more quickly into elite status, an elite status that doesn't require payment. Another category is reallocation. And this, uh, this involves not just reallocation within a corporation, but it involves a reallocation in an interesting way outside of the corporation. People get reallocated from jobs inside the corporation to jobs outside the corporation. Now, in an American sense, this is being fired. This is being let go. This is, involves being um, laid off. And in, 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 in the United States, since in the 1980s, we developed a number of strategies to retrain people or uh, um, placement programs to help them find new positions. In a Japanese context, they go way further. To let someone go is to, is to drop someone from the household. It is to drop someone from, uh, from participation in this corporate group, which, is a, which would be a failure of responsibility of leadership, a failure of leadership among those elites, the elites in the company. Uh, so the way they manage that is to help people find jobs in new places, go out and actually find them jobs and transfer to them from one household uh, to another. Now, with the last decade, um, the Japanese are starting to really feel the pressure of changing something in the way their business uh, is conducted. And a Washington Post article reported that a government-appointed panel reached the conclusion that the Japanese must become more independent. Um, and, the t and the article was titled, Are the Japanese Too Well Japanese? Um, and I'd like to read uh, you a few quotes from there. Um, the panel said that the Japanese should become more tolerant of people who veer from the norm, less preoccupied with rules, peer pressure, and sh school tests. There should be more immigrants and more lawyers. Now this is a radical change to the Japanese community. Um, the report also laments an ossified society in which an allegiance to rules and conformity have leached Japan's vitality. The report encourages impairment of the individuals and if supporting uh, more risk takers. Now, of course, there were lots of opinions uh, that objected to this. Some said um, there's already too much individu individualism. Um, some said, well, the, 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 the Japanese culture has already become too shallow and what are we trying to bring in here? Um, some said, isn't this Americanization and we uh, don't really want this. Um, so I, myself, am wondering what is coming for uh, the Japanese business culture, and it would be interesting for us all to keep an eye on. And so, so we, we do find significant changes taking place, although we will find that in grappling with those transformations, uh, the Japanese companies tend to apply 
and tend to recognize that those changes, the, uh, the, uh, the transformations that they undergo, will be judged in Japanese terms, in terms of traditional Japanese Im images. Hence, it's valuable to explore these images. So let us conclude this module, a module whose purpose was to give you the direct hopefully intimate experience with a framework of interpretation with a set of dominant cultural images that contrast dramatically with ours in the West. Let us conclude this by, by thinking about the actual everyday work of engineers in Japan and in the United States. We learn in the United States that there's engineering work and it's technical. And indeed, we'll, while watching Japanese engineers, we could say that they're doing the same technical work. They're doing fluid mechanics. They are doing statics. They are doing design work. But when engineers are doing their work, are they, real, uh, are they really doing the same work as Americans in similar types of jobs? Do they understand what they are doing in similar ways? Do they understand the meaning of their work in relationship to themselves, their lives, and their employers? Might they be understanding it in, in some very significantly different ways? Practice separating what we understand as engineering work, you're trained to do engineering problem solving. Contrast that with the work of engineers. The work of engineers goes far beyond the technical dimension of engineering work. So when we, and when we move from thinking about the engineering work to the work of engineers as people, and then start moving around, we see that engineers as people have dramatically different kinds of work from one another. As you're being trained to learn, learn well the practices of engineering problem solving, are you being trained to work with people who might understand their work in dramatically different ways